Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you a full face of Suku makeup. Suku is a brand I've been wanting to try out for the longest time. I love watching Alicia Archer's videos and she raves about Suku products. And so when I got an opportunity to go to Tokyo recently, I was super excited to beeline over to the Suku counter and pick up a bunch of goodies. So if you're interested in learning more about Suku, then just stick around. So first off, let's run through the products that I picked up in this haul. So first off, I have here a beautiful Suku eyeshadow palette. This is from their Autumn Winter Collection, so it's one of their limited edition collections. This is in the color story 11, Yoyukari. If you guys watched my Tokyo haul video, you know that this is not actually the original palette that I wanted to pick up. I really wanted to pick up the green brown color story, but unfortunately that sold out right before I could pick it up. And so I ended up with this one, which I think is a very unique, pretty color story. So I'm really excited to get this on the lids. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Suku, it is a luxury Japanese makeup brand. So you can see the packaging is really beautiful and sleek. I also picked up two of their blushes. So first off, we have here their Sumiro blush. This is in the Melting Powder formula. I think this is their overall best-selling formula. It's more of a cream to powder, so it's quite unique. And I picked this up because I thought it was a beautiful everyday blush shade. This packaging is sort of a thinner version of the eyeshadow palette, as you can see. It also has that beautiful metallic detailing on the side. The other blush I picked up is in their Pure Color Blush formula, and this is their Gradient Powder Blush. I have this in the Color Story 4. So this is a pure powder formula, but I'm really excited to see how the gradient affects things. This packaging is a little bit different from the other in that it has a snap enclosure, a little button over here, and it has a reflective metallic back but the same beautiful black front. Here you can see them side by side. And then I also picked up two of their liquid lipstick formulas. So one in their Fluid Glow, which has more of a glowy satin finish, and then one in their Fluid Fog, which has a matte finish. And you can see that difference in finish in the packaging as well. So the Fluid Fog has a matte finish, whereas the Fluid Glow has a reflective finish. I have the Fluid Glow in shade 4 and the Fluid Fog in shade 8. I'll also list the full names in the description box in case you're curious. And then to round out today's look, I also got these two samples, which I'm going to try out today. So one is of their Treatment Serum Primer, and then the other is their Liquid Foundation. This is in the shade 115. TBD if that's going to work for me, but I will try it on today to at least get a sense of the formula. So without further ado, let's get this makeup on my face. So I'm going to bring you guys closer for this portion, and I'm going to first start out with this primer. This is an SPF 15 primer. Oh, interesting. It actually has a little bit of a pink shade to it. So I'm just going to apply this on half of my face because I want to see how the foundation performs without any primer. And yeah, I think I put too much, so let me bring that all the way down my neck as well. I always find it really hard with these little sachets to make full use of the product because the sachet is usually too much for one use, but it's a little bit hard to store them for multiple uses. Alrighty, so here we have the primer on this side of my face and nothing on this side. So just to give you guys a little bit of a view of that, I'd say the side with the primer looks slightly more hydrated, maybe a little bit glowier, but honestly not a huge difference. I have moisturizer and sunscreen on already, so if you see some dewiness on my face, it's from those products. Just amps up a little bit of that shine, but otherwise it's set down pretty quickly. So I think you can put foundation over this pretty quickly afterward. Now let's go in with this foundation. I'm pretty excited about this because I've heard really great things about Suku's foundations. So let's see how this goes. All right, so squeeze out a decent portion. This does look a little bit light, but 
wish me luck. <laughs> if you guys watched my Korean beauty haul, you know that I do struggle a bit with Asian makeup products being often a bit on the light side, but we'll see how today goes. So I'm gonna go in with my jumbo base from my Sonia G Kayaki 2 collection and just blend this guy in. Okay, it is blending very quickly and easily into the skin. I think it is a little bit light for me, but the brush is leaving a fairly light coverage. I would say light to medium coverage. And so with that level of coverage, I think this shade is okay for me. Okay, yeah, definitely a little bit light. So let's bring this down the neck, but very beautiful finish. This definitely has some glow to it. So I think you can see that really beautiful, luminous, glowy finish. Wow. I mean, it's a little bit bright for me. I think if I were in store, I would definitely pick a slightly deeper shade, but this is really beautiful. I think the luminous helps to disguise some of the texture on my skin. I mean, you can still definitely see coverage is not that high. You can still see my pimples. Those are still peeking through but I think the luminosity of this product kind of looks almost like you have a filter on the face. So I still have a bit of product on the back of my hand, so I'm going to just take the rest of that. And I was going to put on concealer today, but you know what, in order to just really see the effect of this foundation, I'm gonna just use the rest of this product on areas where I could use a little bit of coverage and we're just gonna let my blemishes breathe a bit today. So let's just carefully blend that in. Alrighty, there we go. So normally I would powder this down. It is looking pretty glowy. So I would typically maybe mattify this a bit, but I'm actually gonna hold off for now because I really like this finish. I think that's definitely what's most unique about this product. So I'm gonna go off camera and do my brows and be back for the eyeshadow. So I went off camera to do my brows and before we go further, I just want to carefully take a look at my face and see if we can see any differences between the side that has primer versus the side that doesn't. And I would say at least upon this initial application, I'm really not seeing any difference, at least as of yet. I don't know, if you guys can see any difference, definitely please let me know. As a reminder, this side has the primer and then this side does not. It'll be interesting to see though with the wear test in terms of whether this side wears better, at least that would be my hope given that we have that primer down. But so far both sides are looking really nice. I really, really love the glow that this offers. If you want that really healthy glowy skin look, this foundation is gorgeous upon initial application. So my lips are feeling kind of dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on this Fluid Glow lipstick. So I have this in the shade for Irogure, and I'm gonna change this out later on for this one, which will be for the final look. But since this one's hydrating, I'm gonna first put this on so you guys can see what this looks like. So you can see that has really good pigmentation with just one swipe. So this formula I think can also be sheared out if you want to sort of dab it on. It has very much kind of a glossy, moussey texture to it. Very, very comforting on the lips. So here we have Irogure. I really love this shade. It reminds me a bit of Fenty Honey Waffles. That's a shade that I loved a lot but ended up not being able to use because the fragrance was just too strong for me. This one in contrast really doesn't have much fragrance. Let me just double check. Yeah, I don't really smell anything. And when I apply it to my lips, I also don't really smell or taste anything. And I have worn this before and it is a really beautiful hydrating formula. This is obviously not transfer proof or anything, but it is relatively long lasting for such a hydrating, comfortable formulation. And I think you could see that it just instantly plumped up my lips a little bit. It's not a lip plumper, but if you have dry lips, this will definitely immediately make them feel more hydrated. So now let's get into the eyeshadow. So let me first actually give you guys some swatches of this quad. 
So I'm just going to swatch left to right, up and down. So we have this glitter topper shade, then this cool toned periwinkle gray, and then this beautiful magenta fuchsia shade, and this satin deeper charcoal shade. So here we have the four eyeshadows. And you can see these are all pretty subtle. Even this sort of glitter topper shade is not the most high impact, but these are really beautiful tones. In general, what you'll find with Suku is it's not really a brand to go to if you want really high impact, really sparkly, shimmery shades on your lids. But if you want a really flattering texture that is quite easy to use, then I think it's a pretty good go-to brand for that. So I actually have used this palette before. I'll put up an image of the first look I did where I put this all over the crease, put this on the lid, deepened with this shade, and then also put this as a sparkly topper over this shade. For today's look though, I'm going to deviate a little bit and I'm gonna try using this the way that the sales associate explained to me that it's meant to be used. So we'll see how that goes. So the way sales associates in Japan explained to me how to put on eyeshadow was to start out with a shade like this all over the lid and then put the intermediate shade sort of a little bit closer to the lash line but also sort of all over the lid and then to deepen it up near the lash line almost kind of like extended liner with the deepest shade and then to put the sparkling shade over the lid. So we're gonna try that style today. It's quite different from how I usually do my makeup, but we'll see how this goes. So to start out, I'm going with my classic crease from Sonia G into this periwinkle shade. And I'm going to put this basically all over the outer portion of my lid, concentrating it sort of on the crease area, but also kind of brushing it all over the eye area, not being too precious with this. This is a really pretty shade. It's not that pigmented as you can see. So if you want really great payoff, this is not gonna be the shade for you. That's what I discovered when I tried putting this all over the eyelid. It wasn't really giving me the opacity that I was looking for, but I think putting this as a gentle wash like I am right now is a better way of using this shade. So there we go. Here we have the first shade on. Now let's go in to this fuchsia shade and I'm going to put this kind of all over the mobile eyelid, a little bit lower than I put that previous shade. This is definitely the highest impact shade in the palette. It's the shade that will tend to be the dominant one in any look you create with this quad. All right, I'm just gonna clean off that brush a little bit and go in a little bit more with that periwinkle in the crease area just to make sure we don't lose it. Still do want the periwinkle to stand out. And now with a refer number 26, I'm going into this deepest shade and I'm just going to kind of draw this along the lash line from the inside outwards. Normally I would just concentrate the deepest pigment on the outer portion of my lids, but I'm going to just sweep this all the way around. As you can see, none of these shades are super pigmented. They're definitely giving you more of a soft look, though this one can be built up a bit. And then just go a little bit more and with that purple, again, just to soften out that outer corner. So now with a finger, I'm going in with this shade and I'm going to just scatter this all over the inner portion of the lid. As you can see, that adds just a very subtle twinkle to the look. This is not gonna be your kind of Pat McGrath style glitter topper that's really flaky. This is definitely a much more subtle effect. Then I'm just gonna bring a little bit more of that charcoal back along the lash line. Alrighty, so there we go. We have sort of a Japanese style eye look on this side. For the lower lash line, I'm going to kind of replicate what I did on top and first go in with this purple shade, which is sort of the dominant color and just sweep this all over the lower lash line. Still using that refer number 26 brush. Cleaning that off, I'm going into the deeper charcoal shade, concentrating that on the outer portion and then taking some of 
that lighter shade, the periwinkle one, and just putting that on the inner portion. The periwinkle one really doesn't deliver that much impact, which depending on what you're going for might not be an issue, but usually I do prefer to have a little bit more shine. Going in with my builder, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that glitter topper just to see if I can lighten this inner portion area. Okay, so here we have the finished eyeshadow look. I'm gonna replicate that on this side, put on some eyeliner, and then be back for the blush. So here we have the final eyeshadow look. What do you guys think? As you can see, overall, it's a very ethereal, purpley blue look. You're not getting a ton of shine, but you do have a really beautiful glint to the lids. Definitely stay tuned for the end of this video when I go through my overall thoughts, but let's first finish off the rest of this look. So let's go in with some blushes now. So I'm going to first give you guys a couple swatches. So let's first start with this pure color blush and I'm going to swatch both sides of the gradient just so you can see that. Here is the pigmented side and then here is the lighter side. So I think you could use this basically either as blush or highlight or mix them together to sort of tone down the shade if you want something a little bit less pigmented. There is a little bit of shimmer in this as well. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see. Hopefully the camera can capture a little bit of that. But in person you can definitely see some shine when this is in the light. I'm gonna go in with my Cheek Pro from Sonia G. I'm gonna first go into the more pigmented side and concentrate this sort of on the outer portion of the cheeks. And I have not set my base today, so there might be a little bit more sticking than normal, but let's see if this can still blend out smoothly. Ooh, that's a really pretty shade. This is blending very nicely. Let me now go in more to this side of the palette. Put this a little bit more on the center of my face. I think that gives a really pretty shine. As you can see, it's not a significant glow, but there is just a little hint of a sheen. I do want this to be a bit more pigmented though, so I'm gonna go more on the pigmented side and build this up just cause I feel like the camera always subtracts like 30% of the blush. So in person, this is looking pretty blushed, but I feel like when I look on the camera, it's not actually looking that pigmented, but wow, that is really pretty. I do really like how that's looking. Okay, good job, Suku. Hopefully you guys can see also just how smoothing that looks on the face. Like when I look really close up here, I feel like it almost smooths out some of my texture, even though it is a bit of a shimmery blush. Very nice. Okay, I am very pleased with this formulation so far. That was super easy to apply. So now let's compare this with the other formula, which I'm gonna put on the other side of my face. So let's first do a swatch of this. I think this will be a little bit warmer toned. Yeah, let's put that right here. So yes, this is a little bit more apricot in tone, a little bit more warmth. You can see that in the swatch here. Although these two shades do look fairly similar. I was definitely in a neutral blush mood when I was at the store. So just to avoid any cross contamination, I'm gonna use my other Cheek Pro from Sonia G and lightly dab in here. Actually, that picked up quite a lot, so let's see how this goes. Whew, okay, yeah, I think I picked up a little much, but that's okay. Let's just see how blendable this formula is. Ooh, that is looking very nice. I like how for both of these formulas, even though there definitely is a little bit of shimmer in the formulas, when you put them on the cheeks, they just look very beautiful and natural. Let's add a little bit more now. And this one is gliding on so beautifully, even though this is unset foundation. There's absolutely no sticking whatsoever. It's just blending in beautifully. Ooh, very nice. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that shade. I'll build it up a little bit more just to make sure you can. 
So you can definitely see the difference in shade more prominently now. This side definitely has a little bit more of an orangey glow, whereas this side is more pinky. But I think they're both really beautiful. Formulation-wise, I think on the skin, this one maybe has a little bit more of that kind of melt into the skin, healthy glow to it, whereas this side looks a little bit more like a powder blush. And I think that's just because this does have that sort of cream to powder formula. But both sides are looking really beautiful. This one also has a little bit of golden sheen to it, which I think is really flattering. But what do you guys think? Do you have a favorite side? So this could very much be the final look. I think especially if we look at this side of my face, this lip definitely matches this blush very nicely. I mean, it would look better with a more warm toned eye look, but I'm still really digging how this is looking overall. I do wanna show you guys the other lip though. So I'm going to take this off, put on some bronzer as well, just to contour my face a little bit and be back for the final product. So I went in with some of my Romand bronzer. As a side note, I really, really love this bronzer, which I got in Seoul. If you guys haven't checked out my Seoul haul, you should definitely check that out. This is an extremely affordable bronzer, but one that I've been basically reaching for all the time ever since I got. So that's why I have on today. I just used a subtle layer of it on my forehead and around my jawline. I didn't really want to mess too much with how the blushes were looking, so I didn't really put much contour on my cheek area. But just wanted to shout that out in case you guys are curious. So now let's go into the lip portion. So just for context, this is what the two lip colors look like. So the Fluid Glow Liquid Lipstick in 4 Iro Gure is on the bottom. That's what I had on before. Hopefully you can see that it has a bit more of a shimmer finish. Whereas on top we have 8 Haru Tsume, which is in the Fluid Fog Liquid Lip. And that's what I'm going to be putting on now. So let's get this on my lips. This is a much more moussey formulation. There we go. Very, very quick and easy to apply. This for me is a really great everyday shade. It's quite similar to my natural lip tone, just a little bit more muted. And so I think this goes with a wide variety of looks. And this I think overall pairs better with this side of the face, which has more of a pink tone to it. And also goes well with the slightly cooler nature of the eye look. So now let me zoom you guys out to take in this full look. So I will be doing a wear test later to update you guys on how the primer plus foundation wore, but at the moment they are looking really beautiful. It's been maybe an hour since I first applied them and taking a close look, I really don't see any issues. There's maybe a tiny bit of collecting right around my nostrils. Yeah, I guess on this side, there's a little bit of collecting happening there, but that's pretty common and everything else is looking really, really seamless and perfected. Even though I didn't powder, I feel like it has mostly set down and I was able to apply these other products on my cheeks without any issues. So it'll be interesting to see how this wears over the course of the day without any powder. Now for the other products, this is not my first time trying them out, so I can give you guys more of a review of those. First off, starting with the eyeshadow. So I would say that this is a really beautiful eyeshadow palette if you want to use purples and blues in a slightly more muted ethereal way. I think that this is still overall a pretty colorful eyeshadow look as you can see, but the textures are overall quite sheer. And that can either be really good or bad depending on your preferences. I would say that for me personally, I tend to like more pigmented formulations. Pat McGrath has my favorite eyeshadow formula and Suku is extremely, extremely different from Pat McGrath. So whereas Pat McGrath gives you kind of instant pigmentation and really builds up to opacity, Suku is much more light sheer layers that never look that intense on the lids. I have to confess, when I was putting this on, I was thinking this was going to be a negative review because especially these two shades on the top really needed a lot of building up to get to the pigmentation you see on my lids. 
That said, now that the look is complete, I actually really like how this is looking. It gives sort of a translucent effect on the lids, which is very different from what I'm used to. And so I think if you're really into this sort of more ethereal, translucent looking eyeshadow, then Suku is really great to check out. And for me, I can't stop but look at my lids now that they're on. There is this very beautiful, subtle effect to them that adds an air of mystery. It's not really in your face, but the more you look at the eyeshadow, the more it kind of draws you in. So, so far I am really enjoying this palette and pretty stoked about trying this formula. Given my personal makeup preferences, I don't think Suku will be sort of my number one eyeshadow formula, but I do think there is something very special about their formulations and how beautiful they look on the lids. The blushes have both really impressed me so far. I think they both look really, really gorgeous on the cheeks. I'm really impressed how both of them fared on top of unset foundation. For me, normally I find that my cheeks are a bit of a problem area, and so if I don't set my foundation, there often is issues of blush or bronzer catching. But at least for today's look, it's very smooth and really beautiful. I didn't see any catching, did not have any issues with blendability at all. And I think both of these have a really beautiful effect on the skin. Similar to the eyeshadow, you're not gonna get a ton of pigment payoff right away. It's not really gonna be in your face, but there is such a beautiful sort of translucent quality to these formulas, both in terms of the pigmentation and in terms of the subtle sheen that you see on the skin. Like, I don't really think I need highlighter on top of this. I think it just creates that really gorgeous sort of lit from within effect. I don't know, I just keep moving my face around because I feel like between the eyes and the cheeks, there's just so much subtle glow happening. Same with the foundation too. The foundation has that really beautiful lit from within effect. So now coming to the lips, the fluid fog currently feels amazing on the lips. Even though this is more of their matte formula, it's super, super comfortable upon initial application. I have worn this a couple times before though, and I will say that as the day wears on, especially if your lips were not very hydrated before you apply it, it will have that effect of sort of making your lip lines emphasized. So personally, I wouldn't say the Fluid Fog is my favorite matte lipstick formula. I think I prefer the Armani Lip Maestros just a little bit more. Those on me are a bit more comfortable, but this is a solid formula. For context, I'm someone who normally only wears lip glosses. I don't even really like wearing satin lipsticks that much because my lips are very dry, but I am willing to wear these Fluid Fogs from Suku. They are not as hydrating as I would like, but as far as a matte lipstick goes, they still do feel decent on the lips. I do much prefer though the Fluid Glow lipsticks. These ones are super comfortable on the lips. I don't have to worry about them drying down over the day and feeling uncomfortable. They're also decently long lasting and this color in particular, Irogure, is just so beautiful. So I have really been enjoying this lipstick. So overall, I am very pleased with my look for today and how the products are faring so far. I will check in with you guys though at the end of the day to give you guys an update on how all of this has worn. So it's been seven hours since I first put this makeup on, so I wanted to do a final check-in with you guys before I take all of this off. So let me bring you guys in really closely just so you can see. So overall, I would say the makeup has worn pretty well. I haven't touched anything up the whole day. I didn't powder my face and I didn't even touch up my lips. And I'm actually pretty impressed that there's quite a bit of lipstick still on my lips. So for context, after I filmed, I cooked, ate a meal, went to a park, walked around, went grocery shopping, came back. So I have had a pretty active day. I did not run or sweat, and so that definitely helped a lot with keeping my makeup intact. But on the whole, it was a pretty full day. So taking a close look right now, I would say the eyeshadow and blush all look basically exactly the same as when I first applied those. So those are looking really good. 
The lipstick definitely faded a little bit, but considering I ate a meal, they are looking really good overall. I would say that's the trade-off with this sort of matte formulation. As you can tell, there is a little bit of emphasizing of my lip lines. So this isn't the most comfortable hydrating formula ever, but for a matte lipstick, it is fairly comfortable and is very long lasting, all things considered. This is not a transfer proof formula, but it definitely hugs the lips. In terms of the foundation, I would say that it overall looks pretty good. There's a little bit of emphasizing of my smile lines and some creasing over here and around my nose. I would say this foundation looks really beautiful from a distance. So if you're any sort of distance from my face, it'll probably look just really gorgeous and perfected. If I look super, super close up, I can tell that the foundation has collected in certain areas, has cracked a little bit here and there, but that's only if I'm looking super close up. One thing I did notice about this foundation is it does have some luminosity to it and I think that helps when you're looking at it from a distance because it reflects some of that light back. Everything just looks more smooth and perfected. When you look really close up though, I think that the luminance can highlight texture to some extent. So I would say if you have a lot of issues with texture, this is not the number one foundation I would recommend for you. There's definitely other foundations that are more flattering on texture. If however, you are primarily looking for a foundation that gives you a really nice glow and you don't really have people who are looking super close up to your face, then I think this is a really beautiful foundation that will give you that glass skin effect. On the whole, I would say for me, this foundation actually looks better now than when I first applied it. And I think that's just because my skin is a bit on the drier side. So when I first applied it, it looked pretty good from a distance, but when I looked really close up, that cracking that I was mentioning earlier just did not look that flattering. But now that some of my oils have come through, it sort of meshed with the foundation and made everything look a little bit smoother. So actually right now it's a really beautiful finish but I did want to mention that because I did not powder today and so if you are someone with a very dry skin type I don't think this is going to be a good foundation for you. So the last thing I'll mention about today's look is I had some mixed feelings over the course of the day in terms of this eyeshadow look. I think in certain lighting this kind of translucent eyeshadow looks extremely beautiful especially when light is directly hitting it. It does have this just really pretty iridescent colorful glow to it. In other lighting though it can come across as a little bit gray and muddy. And so for me I'm still a bit divided in terms of how much I like this Suku formula. It's just very different from the type of eyeshadow I normally go for. As I mentioned earlier, I typically like more pigmented shadows that are a bit more sparkly, so a little bit more in your face. And compared to those sorts of shadows, this has just a very different effect on the lids. And I'm just still not sure how on board I am with this effect. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Do you like this sort of more sheer sheen on the lids that kind of looks a little bit different in different lighting? On the whole though, I really enjoyed this haul from Suku. I'm really glad that I was finally able to pick up products from them. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love to hear in the comments down below what your thoughts are about Suku. Have you tried them before? Do you have a favorite product from them? Let me know if you'd be interested in more content about Japanese makeup products. But thank you all so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.